Hello everyone, I'm Fan. Today I'm going to share how to develop oil reservoirs. Once we reach the mid-game, oil becomes an essential resource. Generally, we need oil for power generation and for producing plastic. In the game, we can find some crude oil lying around, but once that runs out, we'll need to start developing our oil reservoirs. In order to extract from oil reservoirs, you'll need to build an oil well. Let's start by understanding how the oil well works. First of all, the oil well can only be built on top of an oil reservoir. It is a 4x4 four four building, but it works somewhat like a background building. This means that we can still construct other buildings within its footprint. The reason the lower two tiles cannot be built on is because the oil reservoir is located there. But we still need to build a foundation to support the oil well. Next, let's take a look at how it works. First, we need to supply it with 1,000 grams per second of water to keep it running. In return, it will produce 3,3,3,3.3 3, 3 grams per second of crude oil, while also storing a small amount of natural gas. On top of the oil well, there's a progress bar that shows the back pressure. You can think of back pressure as the amount of natural gas stored inside the oil well. When the back pressure reaches 100%, it means the natural gas storage is full, and a duplicate will need to come and release it. Of course, you can also set a threshold for the back pressure, so duplicates can release the gas earlier. The oil well produces crude oil by simply spilling the liquid directly onto the ground. Now let me introduce this system. First, the internal space of the system is four tiles high, and the top can store natural gas infinitely so that it will not be wasted. At the bottom is the oil well, which needs to be submerged in crude oil to prevent overheating. The inlet is vacuum insulated and does not exchange heat with the outside. For automation, a gas pressure sensor controls the gas pump, making it start when pressure is above one kilo, mainly to save power and stop the pump from running when gas is very thin. Below is a liquid sensor that controls both the oil well and the liquid pump. The liquid sensor is set so that when the liquid is above 50 kilos, the pump starts working. The reason for 50 kilos is that the gas pump is built on this level. And if too much liquid accumulates here, the pump will be submerged and unable to work. On the right, a buffer gate is connected to avoid the pump starting and stopping too often. When the sensor sends a green signal, the pump starts. The liquid pump extracts 10 kilon of crude oil per second but the oil well only produces 3.3 kilars, so the sensor quickly turns red. I set the buffer gate to 20 seconds, so when the sensor turns red, the pump keeps running for another 20 seconds, pumping 200 kilos of crude oil. When the third layer holds 50 kilo per tile, that is 250 kilo in total. Even if 200 kilo is pumped out, the third layer still has liquid left. On the left, a knot gate is connected. This makes the oil well start when liquid in the third layer drops below 50 kilo. Another buffer gate is added, set to 30 seconds. This serves two purposes. The first is that after the liquid pump starts, it takes a few seconds before the third layer drops below 50 kilo per tile. This would make the oil well pause. With the buffer gate, when the knot gate sends a red signal, the oil well keeps running for another 30 seconds. This covers the pump delay and ensures continuous operation. Even if the pump cannot work, for example, if its output is blocked, the oil well stops after 30 seconds. That means 100 kilos of liquid is produced in this time, about 20 kilos per tile, added to the existing 50 kilo per tile, around 70 kilos in total, which is not enough to submerge the gas pump, so overflow is not a problem. The second purpose is when the oil well reaches its overpressure threshold, duplicates go to release natural gas. When released, the gas pushes liquid to other tiles. At this time, the sensor detects liquid above 50 kilo and stops the oil well, interrupting the duplicant. With a delay, duplicates get 30 seconds to vent natural gas. We set the oil well overpressure threshold at 30%. 30 seconds is basically enough to vent all of that gas, especially if duplicates have higher operating skills. Do not set the overpressure threshold too high, because the hot natural gas released may turn water into steam and leak out, polluting the gas. 
the internal temperature of the system will eventually stabilize at just over 80 degrees. So there is no need to worry that the water will turn into steam. Finally, we can build two temp shift plates, one at the liquid inlet and one just below the inlet. These two plates improve system fault tolerance. Next, I will show the construction process. First, we outline the outer layer with tiles. Here we can use granite or igneous rock. When duplicants vent gas, the liquid will be compressed, and if the material has low hardness, the pressure might break the tiles. For the gas pump and the liquid pump, we choose gold amalgam or steel to prevent damage from overheating. There is no specific construction order. You can just build everything at once. Build an empty bottle at the entrance, then add crude oil. This completes the vacuum insulated exit. Connect the power and build a vent. First, we'll vacuum the room. The vacuum is ready. Now we just set the parameters and we can start. Finally, we can install the thermo regulator. Also remember to remove the vent. This completes the construction of the entire system. Lastly, let me show the automation overlay again. All right, that's all for this episode. If you found it helpful, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, I'm Fan, and see you next time.